Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover the potential benefits and limitations of training with heavy versus light loads for hypertrophy. First, let's briefly cover the relationship between load lifted and reps performed. For hypertrophy training, we generally want to take each set fairly close to failure, at least three to four reps in reserve as a minimum, and some sets can be taken all the way to failure if desired. This means that the load we use will determine what rep ranges we perform and vice versa. Intuitively, when we lift a heavier load, we can't perform as many repetitions in a set compared with a lighter load, assuming both sets are taken close to failure. On the other hand, a lighter load will allow us to perform more reps in a set compared with heavier loads. So we have this inverse relationship where heavier loads infer lower reps and lighter loads infer higher reps. So for the rest of this video, both rep ranges and loads may be used interchangeably. So what loads or rep ranges should we use to maximize muscle growth? Let's now establish what influence load has on hypertrophy adaptations. Well, to summarize briefly, the research finds that hypertrophy can be equally achieved across a spectrum of different rep ranges and loads. This meta-analysis analyzed the current evidence on how different loads influence muscle growth. It was found that strength gains are superior from training with heavier loads. However, as long as sets are taken close to failure, a variety of different rep ranges and loads were all equally effective at promoting muscle growth. However, there are boundaries to what loads are effective for muscle growth. While the range of loads we can use is large, it is possible to lift too heavy or too light to maximize hypertrophy. This study compared the hypertrophy outcomes between training with heavy loads in the 2-4 to four rep range versus training with the more traditional 8-12 to 12 rep range. It was found that although strength gains were superior when training with heavier loads, hypertrophy outcomes were superior with a more moderate rep range. On the other end of the spectrum, this study compared the hypertrophic effects of training with loads ranging from 20% up to 80% 1RM. When all sets were taken to failure, it was found that lifting with 20% 1RM resulted in slightly inferior muscle growth compared with 40, 60, and 80% 1RM loads. However, with 20% 1RM, trainees were lifting around 60 to 70 reps per set, making it highly impractical to lift with such light loads anyway. So for practical purposes, trainees should lift within the approximate 6 to 20 rep range for the majority of their hypertrophy training. Lifting heavier than this is probably inferior for muscle growth, and lifting lighter than this is simply impractical for most people. So this is a well-established phenomenon. We know that hypertrophy can be achieved with various different loads and rep ranges. However, in this video, we will be more so discussing the indirect effects that different loading ranges may have on hypertrophy training within this approximate 6 to 20 rep range. Both heavier and lighter loads within this range have their unique advantages and limitations and may be more or less suitable within different contexts. Let's now explore how different loading ranges may indirectly influence hypertrophy training. The first indirect impact is on strength gains. Unlike hypertrophy training, strength follows the principle of specificity. This means that to get stronger at a lift, you need to train that specific lift with heavy loads. This is to maximize neural efficiency, something that is only achieved by lifting heavier loads. So quite clearly, the loads used will significantly impact strength gains, with heavier loads being more favorable. While this doesn't directly impact muscle growth, it may be important for some trainees who have simultaneous strength goals in conjunction with their hypertrophy training. So if you want to get stronger at a particular lift, it may be a good idea to perform one to two top sets with heavier loads and lower rep ranges. However, this should only be performed on the specific lifts that you want to get stronger at, not all lifts in a training program. The second consideration of what loads and rep ranges to implement is exercise selection. Different exercises may be more or less suitable to different loading ranges based on the nature of the exercise. Free weight compound lifts involve more muscles and joints in the movement and have a higher cardiovascular demand. They are therefore generally more suitable to be trained with heavier loads and lower rep ranges, so the cardiovascular system and accessory muscles don't limit performance. On the other hand, isolation lifts have low cardiovascular demands and minimal accessory muscles involved in the lift. This makes them probably more suitable to be trained with higher rep ranges if desired. The point is that some exercises are more suitable to train with heavier loads and lower rep ranges, while some exercises are more suitable to train with lighter loads and higher rep ranges. 
The load and rep ranges used also has an impact on joint stress. It seems that training with heavier loads is more stressful on the joints compared with lighter loads. This means that performing more of our sets with heavier loads will increase our risk of joint and connective tissue injury. This has two primary implications. First is that trainees should limit how much volume they perform with heavier loads across the week. Performing too many sets with heavy loads, even within the hypertrophy rep ranges, will likely result in joint pain or injury over time. And the second implication is for those who are currently managing an injury or have had previous injuries in the past. In both cases, trainees probably want to minimize joint stress for those specific regions. Therefore, it's probably best to train those areas with higher rep ranges and lighter loads to avoid aggravating the injured area. And lastly, the exact rep ranges and loads we use may be altered to induce some training variation. There is some speculation that training with different loads may preferentially hypertrophy different muscle fiber types. This research review investigated the current evidence looking at this phenomenon. The researchers speculated that lighter loads may induce a greater hypertrophic response in type 1 muscle fibers, or in other words, the slow twitch muscle fibers. And on the other hand, heavier loads may induce greater hypertrophy of the type 2 muscle fibers or the fast twitch fibers. While this tends to make some logical sense, there is simply not enough evidence to make firm conclusions. Furthermore, training with different rep ranges and loads throughout the week may be a form of training variation. This is highly speculative once again, but there could be potentially some benefit to training the same muscle with different rep ranges. This could be achieved using different exercises with different rep ranges, or the same exercise with different rep ranges on different days of the week. This could hypothetically be more hypertrophic than always training a muscle with the same rep ranges. However, at this point, this is just a theory, nothing that has solid evidence to back it up. So to summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. Trainees can lift anywhere within the approximate 6 to 20 rep range and achieve equal hypertrophy outcomes when sets are taken close to failure. However, the loads we implement may have some indirect implications for hypertrophy training. Heavier loads are superior for strength gains, meaning that trainees may want to train on the lower end of the spectrum for certain lifts if they have simultaneous strength goals. Furthermore, exercise selection may influence what rep ranges and loads we implement. Generally, Compound lifts are better suited to lower rep ranges, while isolation lifts are generally more suitable to train with higher rep ranges. Lighter loads are generally less stressful on the joints and connective tissue, making them more appropriate for trainees who are managing current or past injury, or to minimize the risk of future injury. And lastly, there is a theoretical rationale for including a variety of different loads and rep ranges in a training program for training variation. Based on this information, trainees can self-select loads they implement and make informed decisions based on their individual context. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.